So, quick recap of what's in this game right now. You can jump on enemies, you can shoot stuff towards the mouse, uh, you can walk around, you can have the camera follow you. This game is really taking shape now. So, uh, let's see. I suppose the next logical step for this game to take um, in the uh, whatever this development thing is here will be changing maps. So, say you get to the end of the, uh, the first map and you want to, I don't know, jump on a flagpole or something and hit the second map, uh, something like that. We're going to do that here. So, let's see. Let's go into uh, this. And, why well, am I even in this? Uh, what we're going to want to do, I suppose, would be uh, have some sort of object that you hit, uh, and then you go to the next room. So firstly, I'm going to just make a second room. It's not going to be anything too fancy. Um, give me a minute here. And this room is going to be about as unexciting as the first one, and it's going to have even less this time because I don't feel like uh, spending more time than I really have to making a, another level for a tutorial purposes. So uh, we are going to be making a new object here. And this new object is going to get a sprite, which I also haven't made because I came prepared to this thing. And I'm just going to call it green to signify it in our go or something. And the object that's going to use that sprite, we're going to call uh, room change. Because that's what it's going to do. It's going to make you change your room. Now, uh, let's see. In the, what is it? In the collision with player event, because uh, that's what's going to happen. It's going to be, I wish the window wouldn't blow up like that. Uh, you're going to say ram the player into the, uh, the room changer as if it was a flagpole in Super Mario or something. And you're going to be going to the next level. And if you wanted to, you could make some fun code to animate the player doing a dance or something. But seeing as the player is just a blue circle right now, um, yeah, we won't be talking about complicated things like that here. Anyway, so we're going to be saying uh, room go to, and we're going to want the same object for changing rooms to be able to send you to any room the designer wants. Say, um, I don't know, you want to make a simple object that sends you to the next level, or maybe you've found like a secret shortcut or something that sends you like 20 levels ahead. But we want to be able to do that without having to make 400 different room changers for every single different room that you might want to go to. So we're going to be introducing this thing called creation code here. So I'm just going to say room go to, I don't know, target room right now. And uh, I'm going to go uh, into level one, it's still code game. I'm gonna call, hang on, I'm gonna call this uh, level one, and I'm gonna call this level two, just to make it a little bit more clear. The names of the rooms don't really matter. Um, and let's see, objects at the end of level one, I'm going to be putting in one of these fancy blue, yeah, that's definitely blue, green room change objects. And as I was saying with creation code, uh, actually, I think I'll run the game first and see what happens. Oh, do I really have to go all the way to the end of the room? Oh, here we are. Now, we're going to jump on this thing. And it's not knowing where the target room is. So, if you haven't messed with creation code yet, it's something that you probably want to get into, because you will probably be using it a lot. So, if you were to... If you can see what I did there, if you were to right-click an object, you have a bunch of different options here. Delete, delete all objects under cursor, uh, all those sort of things. Edit object, you can go directly into the, uh, the object dialog window there. But this one at the bottom, creation code, is the one that we're interested in. And if you were to write code in here, target room equals, say, uh, level 2, which is going to be the room that we're going to, uh, this code is going to run for every instance in the room as soon as they're created. So some objects don't have any. Currently, the only one that does is going to be that thing there. Uh, if you wanted to, you could say, I don't know, with this random enemy here, uh, you could show message the string of uh, the ID. And I guess I'll just do that real quickly so that you can see that um, what happens. You're going to go and uh, this thing is going to show its flash its ID uh, number on the screen real quickly. And it's apparently 100041, and that should be accurate if I uh, if I looked at what it was on the mouse over over here. Yeah, down there, 100041. But that's not important. I'm going to get rid of this now because you won't you don't want to be seeing that every time that the um, the game starts. It's not strictly every time the game starts. Say if you were to go into level two and sign something to creation code, uh, it would happen there too. Even though the game didn't start, you just entered the room and some things were created. Let's see. 
I also said I was going to move this thing over uh, closer to the beginning so I don't have to traverse the level if I want to test the game. So that's kind of annoying. Anyway, if we're to run the game again and uh, run into this thing, we have gone over to this room, except that there is no player. And this is a problem, there's a couple ways to solve it. One, you can just put another player in the room. When you change rooms, objects don't get carried over. So the player stays in level one, and the enemies stay in level one, and the walls stay in level one, and stuff that's in level two, if you were to go back to level one, none of these things would be carried over to level one. So there's a couple ways to deal with this. One, you can put another player object in the room. Um, let's see, let's just drop a player right there. And when I run the game, I'm actually going to um, room into that. Ooh, I died, cool. Why am I dying as soon as I like hit the player? If I were to ram into there, and I did that on purpose, I come into this room and you see that the player's health is full again. Now that is because that these are two different player objects now. You have one player object that stays in level 1, and you have one player object that stays in level 2. And they're completely unrelated, there's no connection to them except that they have the same basic behaviors and properties that are defined in this thing here. Um, it's as if you were to assign, say, two of those, um, let's see, when we go over here, you have two player objects, um, they behave the same, except they're really independent. One died, and it restarted because, I don't know, it has no bearing on the other player that, I don't know, maybe it's still alive and it can continue playing or something. Anyhow, the better way to deal with the, uh, the player issue would be to come into, uh, this place here and check this box a little persistent. Now, uh, I am going to want to, um, let's see, I'm going to go into room one and move this over a little bit, just so that there's a little more space. We'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to go and, um, I meant to actually take damage, but whatever. So there, I took damage, and I'm going to come over here, and I ran into that thing. And you see that I've still got half my health because I took damage once in the last level. But I'm stuck in a wall because I moved over to this room and I spawned that the exact location the player was in the first room. The game didn't ask any questions as to where I should go, and I ended up in the middle of a wall and I can't go anywhere because the way the, uh, the movement works. So that's not very useful. Uh, if you wanted to, you could, I don't know, put this in the exact precise location that you want the player to be uh, when they enter the next room, but we're not going to do that. So I'm going to, uh, so I'm going to move this back over to uh, there a little bit so that I don't have to go running a marathon every time I want to get to it again. Now, if you want to change that, if you want to be able to tell the player exactly where to spawn, you're going to use creation code again, and you're going to be saying, let's put it before the room go to, because I think that'll erase the object and stop the code executing after that, but I'm not sure. I should really do my research on that, and I'll put up an annotation. Anyway, we're going to be saying, we're going to be addressing a variable, if I can spell it, in the player object, and we're going to say that x is equal to uh, new x, no, not new minus x, new x, and same for the y. It is way too early in the morning for me to be writing code, people. It took me like five tries to get right. And when we go back into uh, this creation code, I'm going to look real quickly at this room and look for some decent coordinates to spawn out. So let's go to, say, 96352. We can do that. We're going to be saying new x equals that. There we go. So when we run the game, and we run into that thing, I misspelled something. I love misspelling stuff. I like how it took me five tries to spell it right, and then ended up not spelling it right at all. So I like how you can bounce off the enemy into the thing. But now we've started over here, right in the beginning, like we told it to. Uh, if you were to basically do anything at all to the uh, the room change object, if you were to put another one here telling you to go to level three, which doesn't exist yet. Uh, it would work. So, yeah, that works all the way it's supposed to. That's all I really have for this tutorial here. Um, in the next part, I think I'm going to be getting on to saving the game, because what if you were, um, what if you were, say, at the end of the level and you stop playing and you don't want to restart the game from the be very beginning the next time you start it up? Um, but, yeah, I hope you all enjoy that. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Watch more of the stuff I have uploaded, and I will see you all later.